Hello there, Julian from Julian Tech TM. This is the new year. New year means new PC build. New release of Intel 12400. Six cores, 12 threads. And before we get into it, this video is sponsored by MSI. Together with Intel and Kingston. But MSI has sponsored this video. Thank you very much, MSI. So a lot of the parts are going to be from MSI. We will first unbox this. They send us this package we have the new msi b6600m mortar get this out <gasps> look at that look at this packaging man and then we have kingston fury ddr5 this is so rare so we're gonna feature the new b660m and with the intel cpu 12400 look at that man Cool or not? Cool. Ooh, look at it, just the CPU there. Leh. Let's just start on the build. Take out the motherboard. So yes, this is the Intel i5 12400. If you're wondering how to put in, there's a triangle, bottom right, and there's a triangle, bottom right. Triangle to triangle lah. It's like profile huh? Pop it in. There we go. Let me put the RAM. So I did mention this in the previous 12th gen build, DDR5. Same amount of pins, but you cannot put on a DDR4 motherboard. This is very rare now and very expensive. So if you really can't find this, like DDR5, there are motherboards that use the 12th gen CPU with DDR4 RAM. Lah. So at least got option. Lah, okay, so let's line this up. There we go. So this is the Kingston Fury Beast. Beast. 2x16 GB, 5200 mega transfer per second. Can't really test DDR4 versus DDR5 yet, but we can push this down to 3200 uh, and compare it like 3200 versus 5200, you know. We can have a feel of uh, the comparison between a lower speed and a higher speed. For the CPU cooler, I'm thinking either a liquid cooler or air cooler. So I did test this prior to this video with a 120mm AIO cooler. Uh, it runs very well. Having a air cooler is enough. I think for a lot of people that get this CPU, you won't be looking at a AIO. So I did get a very affordable air cooler, which we would probably use. Yeah, I think we should use the Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition. It's a bit more expensive because it's Black Edition, it's like $10 more. Oh no, that's not smart of me. So one problem that I forgot to solve is that because this is a whole new CPU and uh, socket. In my last video, you saw me do a mod. Send it quickly, like a zzzz. Which, you know what? I probably can do here too. Let's see, if, if it goes through the hole, I'm good. If it doesn't, no good. It good eh, it good eh. Not bad, not bad, okay. Got chance, we try, we try. Yes, I should have checked it, but I thought I can just like, Mod it myself. I'm crossing my fingers, hopefully this fits. We see whether it can fit first. Uh, I don't want to put thermal paste and then realize cannot fit. Hey, hey, can we? So we put thermal paste and remember to peel the plastic off. Where is my thermal paste? I have, not the best, but Arctic Silver 5. Angle on this, zoom in and... See, that's a lot, uh. that's too much. This, this is it's Intel. Okay, not the best. Sorry about that. Don't judge me. As always, do a crisscross. Yeah, some of the screws are not in the correct spot. I might damage something, so please do not try this at home. I'm just... I do this so that you don't have to. It is not ideal. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. It doesn't sit in very nicely. Here's, here's the thing. When I was younger, I ever mount a CPU cooler that doesn't fit with uh, zip ties for a year. So, not recommended. But if it works, it works. I actually know that this is a problem because a lot of the CPU coolers have not been updated with the LGA1700 yet. If you don't want to have any of these problems, make sure the CPU cooler has the LGA1700. Having an AIO is a bit overkill and uh, people that get this CPU want to save money and this is a way to save 60, even $70, or even 100 bucks. This is the reason why I'm so persistent to use an air cooler. So I'm not going to use NVMe SSDs for this build. I will use a regular SATA SSD. Reason being, save money. Here I have a one terabyte SSD. You can get it in less than $200. What this means is that in the future, when you want to upgrade to NVMe SSD, it's ready. You can just open up your PC, put it in, screw it back, 
initialize. Yeah, let's put this in the case. So I have the Lian Li 011 Dynamic Mini. We use this for Julin's PC and I really liked it. Only problem I have is you have to use a small foam factor power supply. Motherboard installed. All I have to do next is to install the case fan, SSD, PSU, and the MSI AMD 66 XT GPU. I am planning to do an update on how to build a PC in 2022, so do stay tuned for that. And now to turn on the PC. There we go. That's the build. Uh, so next one we got to do is uh, showcase the benchmarks. Uh, use it, of course. Test the RAM. Uh, different RAM speeds and then give you my conclusion. So, you know what? Let's go. Everything set up on top of doing gaming benchmark, I also want to answer the question, is air cooling enough for the Intel i5-12400? Because if you know from my previous video, the 12900K runs super hot even if you don't overclock it. I actually already run it with AIO cooler, the MSI 120mm uh, radiator water cooling and the temperatures were super cool. Uh, at 100% usage. So I have confidence that the temperatures will not go to 99 degrees Celsius thermal throttling the whole system. Uh, we are recording the screen also. So you can actually see the temperatures instead of me ne needing to zoom in all the time. You know, I, I usually do that. I might a bit more production value. Uh, Cinebench will run the CPU at 100%. So we can see the temperatures and the temperatures just to make sure the frequency the frequency is at 4000 megahertz so it's running at its 100 percent 100 percent everything okay so the max temperature is 83 degrees celsius don't forget that this cpu cooler didn't have the 1700 lga mount i kind of modified the 1200 to fit the 1700 so there is a risk of not having proper contact but it seems like no problem you know here's the thing about Cinebench Cinebench uses 100% of the CPU uh, I mentioned right if you're just using this PC to play games you would barely hit that 100% for a 6 core CPU you will usually hit about maximum 30% depending on the game. Maximum temperatures at 84 degrees. Definitely not the most chill because uh, 60 degrees on a all AIO water cooling, but it's really enough. You save about $60 uh, to $100 buying this air cooler. But instead of just telling you game run lower CPU usage, why not just show you, right? Let's play a triple A game like Resident Evil Village. So although the CPU runs at a lower usage, the GPU runs at 100% and the GPU will emit heat, hitting the air around the CPU, contributing heat to the CPU as well. So it'll be interesting to see how hot the GPU and CPU will get. I have loaded a level. Average frame per second is about 70 to 80 FPS. Very playable. This is 1080p. This GPU is, I will say, the 1080p king uh, in terms of value. Uh. GPU running at 100% as expected. CPU running at 20 to 30 percent and the temperatures for both cpu and gpu is about 55 degrees celsius the cpu can go down to 50 degrees up to 60 degrees i think when it gets a little bit more uh, intense it might go and this is that level okay i forgot about this level what do i do okay she comes in okay 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 let me go let me go let me go okay pain pain relax ah I thought she would come into here. So yeah, the question of will it run on uh, air cooling? Yeah, I would say it definitely does. And on to the benchmarks. I did a little more than just the regular benchmarks like the difference in RAM speed, but let's go through the normal benchmarks first. First, Cinebench. This will give a comparison of the different CPUs. In terms of multi-core performance, there's a 13% improvement over the last gen 11400F. But more impressive is the single core performance of the Intel i5-12400. With 21% improvement over the 11400F, the 12400 even beats the AMD 5900X CPU. Next benchmark is 3 Mark that will give you a comparison of the different GPUs. And as I said many times, I really like AMD 6600 XT for their 1080 performance and value. In terms of traditional graphic rendering, the 6600 XT beats the RTX 3060 and the 6600 XT is cheaper than the RTX 3060. The RTX 3060 does win in ray tracing performance, but ray tracing with RTX 
RTX 3060 is not a good experience because of the FPS loss even in 1080p. What you do miss out from is Nvidia's DLSS. And if you're looking to play games with DLSS, then the fight between the RX 6600 XT and RTX 3060 is more debatable. But if you don't care about that and only play games like Dota, League of Legends, Valorant or CSGO, then the 6600 XT is the clear choice over the RTX 3060. Next benchmarks, actual gaming benchmarks. The first two benchmarks, Division 2 and Assassin's Creed Vanhalla. This is interesting to show because you can see the different games will perform differently to different CPUs. For example, Assassin's Creed, you can see very little difference in performance. Also, side note, I added RTX 3060 performance so that you can differentiate. For Division 2, you can see an improvement with the different CPU. So this really depends on what games you play. So next thing I tested was the difference in RAM speed. So if I bring up Assassin's Creed and Division 2 again, you can say even with faster RAM, there is no change. Maybe for Division 2, it did, but I did run the two games both on 3200 mega transfers per second and 5200 mega transfers per second, and there were no change. However, I did test it with CSGO, and there was a difference, and it's a big difference. I'm not sure if it's because of the RAM speed to CPU or what I did, but well, I tested it out two times and got the same result. I don't understand why yet, so take this result with a grain of salt. Also because this is not DDR4 versus DDR5. This is DDR5 brought down to 3200 mega transfers per second instead of actually using a DDR4 RAM. Then the other benchmarks just show you the difference in performance in 1080p and 1440p. Okay, conclusion time, and there's a lot to unpack here because there's not only a new CPU, but a new generation of DDR5 RAM. First, let's start with the CPU. The in Intel Core i5-12400. With the testing I've done, this is definitely a consideration if this is your first PC. If you have any 10th gen or 11th gen or the 5000 series of AMD, it's not worth upgrading. If this is your first PC and you want something a little bit in the mid-range to budget range, this is definitely a CPU to get. Other than better performance in this price range, you get features like PCIe Gen 4 and DDR5 RAM. Which leads us to DDR5 RAM, the new generation of RAM. At the moment, the cheapest DDR5 RAM set that I can find on carousel is $700, which is way more expensive than DDR4. Like the cheapest 16 gigabyte kit you can buy is $150, $550 cheaper. So even though Kingston has sponsored me with this beautiful Beast Fury DDR5 RAM kit, I do not recommend getting DDR5 RAM unless you don't like money. I do, however, recommend waiting for DDR5 price to drop because when DDR4 launched, it was like $200 for 8 gigabytes and $400 for 16 gigabytes. And now it's like $75 for 8 gigabytes. So it's, it's just how RAM is. The question is, how long do you wait? I think you definitely will have to wait a lot longer than DDR4 for the price to drop. So if you can't wait, brands like MSI have their motherboards in DDR4 version. And with that, you can get the Kingston DDR4 RAM instead. I know the test I've done is not fully fleshed out, but this will give you a good idea on how the new generations of components compared to the last generation of components. I will also be planning DDR5 versus DDR4 like proper testing z690 versus b660 so if that is the kind of thing that you want to know do stay tuned and uh, one last thing i want to talk about is the price of this pc obviously with the ddr5 ram it's going to be very expensive but i have the list over here uh, because a lot of these parts are new i won't know the true market price especially you know scalpers and all this kind of thing but i will make a calculated guess on the price okay so first the cpu motherboard combination you have the 12400 and the b660 from msi i predict it will be roughly around 700 dollars but if you wait one more month it might be 600 dollars let's put it at 700 dollars first okay uh gpu will be about 950 dollars although it's supposed to be 700 dollars Market price is just it's just like that lah. CPU cooler fifty dollars. Uh, RAM seven hundred dollars. Yeah, mm, mm, DDR five RAM just it's just like that. Uh, SSD one hundred and fifty dollars. Small foam factor seven hundred and fifty PSU one hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, case. $120, case fans $20, and the total cost is $284. Yes, it's very expensive for the parts you're getting. Uh, I, and it's really because of DDR5. Price will definitely go down as months go on, so I can see this in the future being a 2K PC. Just not at the moment, but this will just give you an idea 
what we have in the future. It's just really expensive now because that's the price to pay for cutting edge technology. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I know I've not been uploading very often and uh, one of my New Year's resolution is consistency not being so so critical on the content and just upload because one problem i have is i have this idea uh, it sounds better in my head i execute the idea and i just don't feel confident with the video and i just don't upload it and i just create more problems with myself so there's going to be some struggles for me in jan because i'm going to go to reservice on the 19th of january i still don't have my office ready i do not have any employees or editors or writers or anyone to help out and uh, it can be very overwhelming i'm not trying to complain but i'm just trying to produce the best video for you guys it's just, it's just a struggle but i'm looking forward to 2022 so thank you guys so much happy new year and i hope you have a very very good year and I'm done.